So let's have a look at Audacity. This is what it looks like when you start and I'm just going to take you around a few areas of it. Up at the top we've got what's called the transport controls. It's very much like an old VCR or a tape recorder. Of course very soon people won't know what I'm talking about when I say that. But uh, for now we've got a pause button, we've got a play, stop, um, skip to start, skip to end and a record button. And pretty much for recording and playback you're going to just be using the record and the play. We might start using some of the others in the future. We have a timeline along here, there's nothing on there at the moment, so um, that will become relevant once we get a track on there. We've got some different controls here for editing once we've made the recording. Um, the one that's most important is this one here that looks like a capital I, and that's the selection tool. It will be selected by default, you shouldn't have to tweak it at all, um, but if one of the others is selected for any reason, just click on there. We then have um, level meters, input and output. I'm not recording at the moment, so nothing's showing, but this gives you a good idea that you're getting a signal once you start recording. Then up here we've got the playback volume and the recording volume and we can tweak these to, um, to get everything at the levels that we want. Down at the bottom, probably something that, that you're going to want to check when you set it up for the first time is the project rate. This is the frequency that Audacity will use to record your voiceover. For most things, most microphones, um, 44,100 is the correct setting, and that will give you CD quality. I've got 4,800 because I'm using my Blue Yeti, which will record at 4,800, so that gives me better than CD quality. So all we need to do to record is literally just click the record button, and you should see straight away that I've got an input level up here and that as I'm speaking it's actually producing a wave of my voice here. Now I could tweak it, I could turn up the input level and if I turn it right up you'll probably notice a difference in the size of these waves, not a huge difference, but if I turn it down you'll definitely notice a difference. See how they've gone much smaller. So somewhere up here is probably about right. And I always do this because I may have made some changes with my microphone, there's, there's um, a, a volume control on the microphone itself, and if I've been tweaking that for whatever reason, it might be that my settings have changed. So I'll want to come in here and just do a test recording like this, and uh, that will tell me um, that everything's working okay and that I'm good to go. Something else that's important to check before you first start, is on the edit menu under preferences under recording what device now the Yeti microphone is stereo so by default you'll get two channels and I'll show you what that looks like if I record you see I'm recording now and all I'm getting is a left and right with identical um, with identical voice print on it and that's going to make life a little bit more difficult for me when I get into editing the video, so I don't want this. I'm going to get rid of it, set my preferences back to one channel, mono. And I would strongly advise you to do exactly the same, unless you're recording something like an interview where you're going to have two people speaking and you're using the full stereo capabilities of the microphone. Now another thing that's really important when you record is you want between 5 and 10 seconds of silence at the beginning and at the end of your recording. And you'll see why shortly. <clears throat> so if I was going to do if I was going to start actually recording my script now, I would have my script to hand next to my microphone and I would hit record and I would start off with 10 seconds of silence.
Picture yourself 12 months from now entertaining a group of your friends around the piano that you're playing like a maestro. Okay, I would go on and I would finish my script. Now I'm going to do that again because I want you to just look at the input meter whilst I'm saying nothing. In theory, nothing should have been recorded there. In theory, there was just silence. If I make this bigger, you can actually see that it wasn't silent. There was something being recorded. You could see the input meter flickering. And that's the noise that I was telling you about, the background noise. And uh, one of the things that we're going to look at is how we actually filter this out. And I'll show you on this track whilst we're here. What we need to do is select few seconds of it. I usually try and get somewhere around about five seconds roughly. So to select it I literally I left click and drag. Once I've done that I can go to the effect menu and click on noise removal. I can then say get noise profile and what it does is it analyzes that selection. And based on the analysis of that selection it now knows what noise looks like. So if I just click to the left here, I now select everything. You see how it's all highlighted? Do that again. If I click to the left, everything's highlighted. I then go back to Effect, Noise Removal. Now I've already given it the noise profile, so I'm going to say how much do I want to reduce it by, and I find 24 decibels is about right. Frequency smoothing, I'll leave these two down here. Um, you can make it more aggressive, but the, the, the danger is the more aggressive you make it, the more likely it is it's going to take out some of your voice as well. So go pretty much with the defaults, some fairly low settings on these bottom two and about a middle setting on the noise reduction, and we say OK. Now have you noticed how that's all smoothed out now? It's probably not perfect, I could probably do it again. So, same sort of thing, get noise profile, noise remo removal, okay, so there's nothing now for it to remove. And if we do this with voice as well, so I'll delete that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have some voice on here. So this will include noise throughout my voice. So you'll notice there's a few little glitches there. That was literally just me moving my hand towards my mouse. If I play it back, you won't hear anything. Certainly not over the video. But if we go through here and we say noise removal, get noise profile. Noise removal, OK. You see that that's all gone but it hasn't affected my voice. My voice is still there. And this should sound pretty natural still. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have some voice on here. So this will include noise throughout my voice. Okay. If I just undo that, to reintroduce the noise, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it much more aggressive. So I'm going to put these values right up. If I now play it, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have some voice on here. So this will include no. Okay, in this case, the uh, it did such a good job, didn't make a difference. But you are in real danger when you do that of starting to affect your um, your actual voiceover, particularly if you have any quieter sections. They'll really get messed up by that. So let me just put the values back. So they would be my typical values. So that's the general principle about how you work with um, Audacity. I'll go into it in a little bit more detail, but we're going to work with the actual file that I've recorded.